Hey everyone! It's been a while since our last video here and I bet you missed this cute little face. I'm so excited to be back with a new video and while it's not exactly the most fun topic, um, I think it's important for a lot of you dog parents out there. Today we're talking about Westie allergies. You may not know this because I haven't talked about it on this channel yet. But Sami has been struggling with skin allergies since he was about one year old. And I've tried everything, well, almost everything. Some things that worked for a while, others that didn't, and some things that I started doing recently that are doing wonders. And I think many of you will be interested to know how I manage Sami's allergies without medication. And hopefully you're gonna learn some things that will help your pups as well. So let's get into it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about when Sami first started showing signs of allergy. When Sami was about one year old, he started showing the first signs of allergy. He was licking and biting his paws a lot, um, especially after running in the grass. Now, honestly, I didn't think too much about it at the time. Um, I don't even think I made the connection that it could be allergies because I didn't know. Um, and I remember posting some videos of him chewing on his paws and I posted them on Instagram because I thought it was funny and a few people wrote to me and said, you know, that could be an allergy, so be careful. Um, and I remember asking his vet at the time and she said, let's keep an eye on it. And honestly, it wasn't so bad, so I didn't do anything about it for a while. Then as time went by, the allergy flare-ups were more frequent. He was scratching, licking his paws a lot, especially at night. Um, so when he was about two years old, I asked the vet, could we do an allergy test? So that's what we did. It's basically a simple blood test that they send to the lab and they test for various allergens, both food related as well as environmental. I can tell you that it's quite expensive. We paid 400 euros here in Portugal, but if you live in the United States or the UK or Canada, which I know that a lot of you watching um, live there, I'm assuming it's a little bit more expensive. Anyway, we thought it's worth doing it so that we can adjust and do everything possible to make Sami feel better. So we did the allergy test and this is how we found out that Sami is allergic to many things. The worst thing that he's allergic to is by far dust mites. Just to give you an idea, the chart has numbers assigned to each allergen so that you know how allergic he is to each element. And dust mites are something like 3,500 while everything else is like at 100, 200, 300. So the dust mites are like super, super high um, in terms of his allergies. And then there are also the food allergies. It seems that Sami is allergic to chicken, pork, beef, lamb, uh, you name it. He's also allergic to all dairy, so he can no longer have dairy. Things like wheat, corn, um, a little bit of allergy to rice, soy, and even egg. The vet circled on the chart all the things that he should stay away from. She also mentioned that these allergies can change in time. So it's possible that at some point he could develop even more allergies to new things as he ages. Yay! <laughs> Couldn't be happier about that. So let's talk about managing the Westie allergies. The first thing I did was to learn about dust mites allergy, which humans have too, so um, it was quite easy to find information online. Now, it's impossible to keep dust away since it's everywhere, uh, but there are some things that can be done. Like make sure the house is as clean as possible, the AC filters cleaned often, the carpets cleaned often, things like that. Um, and in fact, it's good if you don't have a lot of fabrics in the house, things like wallpaper, carpet, thick carpets, um, curtains, other things like wash the bed sheets at a higher temperature because that will kill the dust mites. At some point I even bought a spray that allegedly kills dust mites and it's non-toxic so it's safe for pets. Um, I have no idea if it did anything. I bought it from the vet's office and how it works is you basically spray it on the fabrics like carpets, the sofa, the bed, 
and there's this super thin layer of wax that as it dries off it's supposed to asphyxiate the dust mites because you know they need oxygen to be able to live another thing i did is i bought those vacuum storage bags you know the plastic ones and i put a second change of sami's blankets and pillows um, inside the bags and stored them for a few months which again allegedly suffocates the dust mites and i have no idea if that helped either but i literally tried everything then i started giving sami baths weekly at the advice of our vet i got a shampoo that is made for dermatitis and other skin issues um, it's supposed to help with the itchiness and soothe the skin throughout the years i tried various of these shampoos um, and the ones that I like best, I'm going to link them below in the description so you can try them too. I noticed some improvements after these baths, like his skin was less itchy right after, but it still, you know, it didn't fix the allergies. It just made things a little bit better. The next thing I did was I changed the food. At the time, Sami was eating various kibbles that I kept rotating because he doesn't like any kibble. So anything that he tried, he got bored of within a week. So I switched to a kibble that helps with skin allergies. There are many dog foods that have that, um, but the one I chose was Hill's Prescription Diet because it's an established brand and there's a lot of research behind it, you know, lots of studies that show how dogs do on it. And that was important to me. And also it has less retractions than other dog food brands, which means that there's less risk associated with it. So overall, I found it more trustworthy than other brands. Until recently, Sami ate one of the two kibbles from this brand. There's Derm Defense, which is for environmental sensitivities. And then there's Derm Complete, which is for both food um, and environmental allergies. I would just buy whichever one I could find and I would rotate between them. They both claim to help the skin barrier and things like that. And they have options like duck and rice or potato and salmon, um, which are great for, for Sami because there's nothing that he's allergic to. So he was on this kibble for about three years and I can't say that his allergies were gone, far from it, but he was doing better on this food than when he was eating other dog foods. With all of this, Sami had good days and bad days. He was never completely fine. There was always something like itchy paws, um, especially between his toes where the skin is really sensitive and he would just lick, lick it raw, basically. Um, or he had these hot spots on his belly and inner thighs that would become crusty and itchy and leave marks. Uh, sometimes his skin was red and itchy and crusty. Sometimes his butt was <laughs> itchy and crusty. Uh, sorry for being graphic, but if you have an allergic dog, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So even during the best of times, there was always one of these things going on. But the worst of all was when all of these things came together at the same time. He had entire weeks of flare-ups that made him grumpy and easily annoyed, as you can imagine. I never wanted to put him on treatments like Apoquil or Cytopoint shots, which are the things that most veterinarians recommend to allergic dogs. And I didn't want that because from everything I learned, they suppress the immune system. So they basically treat the symptoms, but not the actual inflammation in the body. So the dog keeps having hot spots and red skin, but it doesn't itch as much because the immune response is basically being told, shut up, everything is fine, but it's not. So I just didn't want to mess with his immune system at least not while his allergies were somewhat manageable. But I'm not gonna lie, I've had many moments when I was so sad seeing Sami like that, that I almost caved. Once or twice, I even asked my vet if we could just give him the Cytopoint shot just this one time to calm him at least for a while. And then every time at the last moment, I decided not to do it. And I kept trying other things that I thought was, were safer. What I'm trying to say is I'm not against these treatments um, and I would never tell you not to put your dog on Apoquil or Cytopoint, especially if their symptoms are so bad, their quality of life is awful and you do 
anything to get them to feel better. I totally get that. I know uh, what that feels like. So if that's the case, you know, go for it, try it. And if it works, I'm happy for you. I heard about many dogs who, who have been on one of these treatments for years and their allergies have improved. Um, just that in my case, I, I just always thought that Sami's allergies could be managed in other ways. Um, and I was lucky to have the time and the resources to keep trying new things because you know, all of the, the things that I'm talking about in this video, they take a lot of time to figure out and there's a cost that keeps adding up. So it's not, it's not easy and it's not for everyone. And I know that. So let's talk a little bit about some things that I did throughout the years that helped. I already mentioned the, the shampoo for skin allergies. Um, and aside from that, I also use chlorhexidine products to wipe Sami's paws after every walk. Chlorhexidine is basically an antiseptic and it disinfects the paws. I use this multiple times a day during flare-ups and once every few days when Sami was doing okay. You can find chlorhexidine as a mousse, a wipes or even shampoo. I like the wipes best because they're easy to use and there's no water involved. And this is really important. Wet paws are really bad for allergies because moisture leads to all kinds of bacteria and fungi that makes the paws even itchier. So if you can skip washing the paws daily and clean them with wipes instead, it's gonna be better. After the chlorhexidine wipes, I would use fusidic acid cream, which I got from the vet. Uh, the one I use is called Isoderm and it's an antibiotic and steroid cream made to treat infection and relieve itching. I followed my vet's advice and I would apply this cream after using the chlorhexidine wipes and only on the hot spots. And I made sure to put a cone on Sami after this so that he can lick it off. Never skip this step. Another thing I did for a while that worked well for hot spots was hydrocortisone spray. I'm gonna link the one that I used below in the description. It's an anti-inflammatory that you can spray on the itchy areas and it immediately helps relieve the itch and inflammation. This is also a steroid and it worked really, really well. It would calm Sami's itchy skin within minutes. So I would reserve this for the really bad flare-ups, the emergency cases. And I would use this spray twice a day, morning and night. It does smell kind of bad, kind of like acetone, and Sami absolutely hated it. So I would only use this as needed. Then we have the cone of shame. <laughs> this is your best friend if you have a dog with skin allergies. It's not fun, I know, but I've had to keep Sami in one of these for days at a time during the allergy flare-ups, especially at night to keep him from licking and chewing his skin raw. Um, for some reason, he gets itchier during the rainy days. Um, I don't know, the humidity must trigger his allergies. So if he's not wearing a cone, he only gets worse. But after two, three days of, of wearing the cone, his skin has time to heal and it's a lot better. This video ran a little longer than I'd hoped, so I decided to split it in two parts. In the next video, I'm sharing with you some major changes I made to Sami's lifestyle that actually solved his allergies. Join me in the next video for part two.